Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's Prime Minister, has now apologized publicly and privately in a phone call to our Prime Minister for Israel killing seven aid workers, including Australian Sami Frankham, firing rockets into three vehicles of a charity delivering food in Gaza. Here's the Israeli military's explanation for this tragedy. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. It was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night during a war in a very complex conditions. It shouldn't have happened. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. I'm not sure that's the full story. I've seen reports in Israel that uh, the military there thought a Hamas operative was with the convoy. Did they shoot knowing they were aid? We need to know and there'll be an investigation. The Prime Minister today spoke to Netanyahu. I expressed uh, Australia's anger and concern at the death of Zomi Francom. This is completely unacceptable. Uh, the Israeli government has accepted uh, responsibility uh, for this. I thought his comments were more measured uh, today, but other members of his government are whipping up outrage over Netanyahu, who, after apologising, added this. Prime Minister Netanyahu has committed uh, to full transparency about how this tragedy could possibly have occurred. Sorry, that was not Netanyahu. What Netanyahu said was uh, that, well, mistakes happen in war. Um, Ed Husick has, in my opinion, been one of the government's most anti-Israeli ministers and jumped on, on that phrase. But opposition leader Peter Dutton pointed to the bigger picture. That is uh, essentially an incredibly insensitive remark. Innocent people losing their lives in the Middle East at the moment uh, is as a direct result of Hamas's attacks on the 7th of October. Joining me are Cameron Milner, former Chief of Staff to Labor leader Bill Shorten, and now Director of GXO Strategies, and Michael Costa, former New South Wales Labor Treasurer. Um, Cameron, what do you make of the government's handling of this uh, tragedy in Israel, in Gaza? Well, it is a tragedy and it's awful that someone lost their life, but it is a war zone and let's not forget how this war zone started. It was a dreadful terrorist attack from Hamas against 1,500 Israelis who lost their lives, innocent Israelis who lost their lives. And I don't see those Australian politicians jumping up and down about the 100 people who are still hostages due to Hamas. Hamas is using civilian infrastructure, they're using schools and hospitals to shoot from. Uh, and in this situation, it's awful there was a tragic loss of life, but Hamas are the reason for the person's death, ultimately. It was on that very point, Michael, let me play to you, Foreign Minister Penny Wong. She was very much more aggressive to Israel than the Prime Minister today, both on ABC Radio and on TV, demanding an immediate ceasefire, even though Hamas still won't agree to release its Jewish, host Jewish hostages, which is, I thought, part of the deal. And I have said publicly, as has uh, the Prime Minister, uh, we want an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. We have said directly to the Netanyahu government that their actions uh, are, are meaning that they are losing support amongst many countries. Uh, and I would say again what I've said to them directly, that uh, the Netanyahu government must change course. Uh, I would also say we continue to expect Israel to comply with international humanitarian law. Michael, the way Penny Wong puts it, it's like Israel is the one that should unilaterally declare a ceasefire even when Hamas has not agreed to the conditions, which include releasing hostages. Yeah, absolutely clear. Um, Hamas doesn't want a ceasefire, and that's the bottom line here. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, desire the Australian government has, uh, the reality is that Hamas will not accept the terms for a proper ceasefire, and that involves release of the hostages. Uh, look, I think Penny Wong is, um, you know, walking that tightrope that now exists in the Labor Party between the sort of... Um, uh, the traditional position on Israel and, um, you know, those branches and those electorates that are, are full of people that are sympathetic to Hamas. And uh, unfortunately, that's where the Labor Party finds itself. I've got to say that uh, the Prime Minister's comments, I thought, were reasonably measured. Uh, all you can do in these circumstances is 
call for an investigation. Um, he was much more measured. And I think to, um, Dutton is absolutely correct. Uh, ultimately, the responsibility lays with Hamas. Yes, I thought so too. Um, Cameron, Sam Mostyn, you will have bumped into her many times, I'm sure, in your career with I Labor. have, yes. Sam Mostyn is our new Governor-General. Good choice? No, it's a terrible choice. Uh, she is the Queen of Woke. Um, but this is the Prime Minister's choice. This is the Prime Minister's captain's pick. And quite frankly, Albanese has given a middle finger salute to every single Australian who voted no to his voice. 60% of people he's given the middle finger salute to by appointing the most woke person with actually a terrible record, a terrible record in corporate Australia. I mean, she's the chair of a super fund that's building a billion-dollar apartment building in New York with scab non-union labour. The CFMU protested about her only a week and a half ago, but she's Albo's choice. Uh, and he wants to put the wokest person in the position and, unfortunately, trash the constitutional role of the Governor-General by such an appallingly bad appointment. Now, I'm going to say the Sam Mosson will probably try very hard to be uh, a Governor-General in the old school, uh, you know, uh, keeping her opinions to herself, but I, I don't know whether she can. Uh, Michael Costa, what do you make of it? Well, I think, um, you know, the fact that she deleted all her tweets, her woke tweets uh, off X and Twitter, <laughs> was a good sign to me. I mean, look, the real test will be how she performs in the role. I mean, uh, she's got strong views, but we've had Governor-Generals in the past with strong views, and Labor's had some success with some of them and some failures. I mean, John Kerr was a failure, and um, uh, Bill Hayden was a success. So he had views as well. Um, it really comes down to how she performs in, in the role. I think uh, I can't wait for the first Australia Day um, to see... Uh, uh, how she approaches that particular <laughs> issue, because I think that's going to be a big challenge, given those tweets. That That is going to be a huge challenge. Someone who calls it Invasion Day, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, let us see how she can uh, keep the, keep smiling and handing, uh, you know, shaking hands on mm. Australia Day. Let's, let's see that. But that's where I fear the rubber might hit the road. Cameron, you're just back from Britain, where you talked to the Labor Party there. Uh, the Labor Party is almost certain to form government sometime this year. L looks like a That's landslide. True. You wrote a fascinating piece about what you found there and how you can contrasted it to here. You wrote this in the Australian Today. What did you conclude? Well, it's not a Labor issue. So Keir Starmer and Labor are really clear-eyed on China and the threat that China represents to our world security. Uh, that's why AUKUS is so important to the UK, the US and Australia. But as the nearest beneficiary of AUKUS, the weakest link is, in fact, Australian Labor. Under Anthony Albanese and Richard Miles, we are weak and compliant for China. We're cutting wine deals rather than national security deals. And that's a real problem. Uh, and Albanese is no longer just China's handsome boy. He's also their weak boy. What do you make of it, uh, Michael, the difference between uh, British Labor and Australian Labor? Australian Labor used to be much more hard-headed, as you know. Mm. But that's true, but uh, I think Cameron's been a bit harsh there. I mean, we have continued with AUKUS, uh, given all the pressure that's there, and we saw Keating recently, um, you know, they're heading in the right direction. The problem is they don't put the resources in. They don't have the resources. As for Labor over there, I'd be very, very worried. Um, you know, Corbyn can't... Uh, you've got Corbynistas there, uh, Angela Rayner. She's at the deputy leader's in scandal. Starmer can't even define what a woman is. At least Albanese could do that. Um, so even though they're going to have a landslide, uh, I think uh, well, well, I, I, you, don't, you don't want to be um, looking at this through rose-coloured glasses, Cameron. Uh, uh, far from it, Michael. And, and, and the great thing about Keir Starmer is he's expelled that anti-Semite Jeremy Corbyn no, from the Labor Party. He won't be representing the Labor Party at the next election. They're still there. The recent by-election that uh, they had to get rid of their candidate shows that very clearly. Oh, but well, he wasn't the Labor candidate. And Starmer spoke out well against him. They did. They did, yeah, Andrew. Good, good stuff. Michael Costa, Cameron Milner, great stuff. Thank you so much indeed for your time.